My name is Joachim Schulze. I'm a physician by training and I'm a professor for systems medicine at the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases in Bonn. And I'm coordinating the Neurokov project, which is a European grant that is um, working on aspects of long COVID and neurocovid. Neurocovid is, um, is part of what we call long COVID, so all patients that have uh, a very prolonged, a long time uh, symptoms after they had an infection with uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus and they had first acute COVID, but then the disease prolonged over weeks, um, usually even months. And if these patients um, have symptoms that are connected to the brain or the nervous system, then we're at the moment calling this uh, neurocovid yeah? so because it's the, the, neuro, the nervous system the neurons are somehow affected by this infection that's why we call it neurocovid unfortunately there's a lot of things missing in, in our understanding we now know that uh, probably there are many different uh, reasons why people can have this prolonged disease um, um, we, we think that uh, one part is the immune system that is not working properly to um, to um, fight the, the viral disease. Um, there are some indications that even some virus might be still left um, in, in the body. Um, and then it's also possible that some other organ systems are involved, particularly the, the brain, the nervous system, so some damage to the nerves themselves, to the, to the neurons. Um, and um, other people have suggested that even the, the vasculature, so the vessels, our blood vessels are, are damaged. And then together with uh, a damaged nervous system and a damaged immune system lead to these symptoms. So it's complicated and because it's so complicated we really have to work and do basic research on it to really better understand what's going on and then hopefully find new ways of uh, helping patients with these diseases. We started uh, um, two years ago to think about a European consortium which we called Neurocov um, these are experts across Europe that um, came together to better understand this disease NeuroCOVID um, and um, this consortium is now active. It's a European grant so it's uh, funded by the European Union in, in the uh, research program Horizon Europe and we are experts in many different fields in virology, in uh, neurology, epidemiology, but also in immunology. So many uh, people come together with different expertise and trying to tackle on different levels of research what this disease is and how we could basically find new therapies and then hopefully uh, prevent even this uh, disease or uh, you know, in the future maybe being able to treat patients with this disease. In the end, uh, um, Nurokov is supposed to have several goals. Um, and uh, one of the goals is to better understand the disease. So once you know the disease better, you can develop diagnostic tests, uh, specific tests, uh, for example, uh, based on biological changes, we call them biomarkers. So that's one of the goals to, to be achieved in this program. Um, and if we have those, there might be also the potential that we find um, structures in the body that can be targeted by therapy, so very specific ter therapy. Precision medicine could be one of the goals then that we um, want to achieve in this large consortium in Europe. The health emergency that the WHO has declared is the pandemic. Yeah? And the pandemic has a very clear definition. And one is correct, the acute infections really had gone down quite dramatically, which is due to the very big success of vaccination. And so therefore, you know, having seen the criteria, it's absolutely correct that the uh, WHO did that. Um, what we see right now with long COVID or the, the, the special uh, patients with the nervous system problems, which we call neurocovid, um, part of long COVID, this is not the same, yeah? but still we have millions of people that suffer from these prolonged diseases. Um, we call it a pandemic in, within the pandemic or as a result of the pandemic. Um, but there's other situations like that where we're having not an emergency situation. Think about obesity, which is also a world, worldwide problem, and yet we're not have declaring a pandemic of obesity. It's the same like this. This disease we're working on is uh, millions of people suffer but it's not really a, a, a seen as a pandemic 
emergency by the WHO and it needs other means of research and, and um, um, measures, but not the emergency measures that you need for uh, acute infections. Yeah. Nevertheless, th for those patients that suffer from that, um, it's absolutely necessary that we increase our science and research on it because it's a devastating life, uh, devastating disease, uh, makes people so miserable that they cannot follow their normal life anymore and that's why we do this research. What should we do better next time? And I have to say what we learned is if we work together as a scientific community across the world, that's the most successful way to, challenge, to, to tackle the, the many, many questions that come up in such a pandemic. And whenever we did it this way, we were most efficient. Um, whenever we had built borders between institutions or countries, then things didn't go very well. So in my future world, we have a network of uh, institutions that are prepared uh, to work together closely and uh, without large competition, but in a, in a very collegial way to tackle these big questions. And um, actually, we're working on these systems. Um, we just need more resources and more money to fulfill this, uh, this future task.